Hey friends, welcome back. So far, we've built out the base structure of our application, but we need a few more things. One, we need to build out the structure for the housing component. Two, we need to make the component customizable so that we can dynamically create one component per housing location. Three, we need to dynamically display the housing locations. And finally, we need to add some styling to the application in order to make it render like the screenshots. We have some work to do, so let's get to it. Let's start in the housing-location.component.ts file and update the template property of the component metadata with the code needed for our component template. Let's start by adding a section element with the class listing. Next, we'll add three child elements. An image tag with the class listing-photo, an h2 tag with the class listing dash heading and a P element with the class listing dash location. Now let's save all of our changes. The browser will be updated, but we'll likely not find any new content. And that's because right now the HTML doesn't have any content. The content that we need are the specific properties that make a housing location unique. Let's sort that part out now. We've created three elements in the template, a place for the listing photo, the listing heading text, and the listing location. It would be great to be able to pass data to this component that contained the values that we need. Fortunately, there is a feature in Angular that allows us to do just that, input properties. Angular components can receive data through a feature called input properties. Now, the next question is, how should that data be configured? Let's review the data we can expect to receive that describes a housing location. Each location will have an ID, name, city, state, photo, number of available units, a Boolean value for whether or not it has Wi-Fi, and another Boolean value for whether or not it has laundry. On the landing page of the application, we'll only display the name, city, and state. These are the three properties we want to use in our component. We want our component to accept housing location data in this specific format. Now, this is a job for a type. Types help us to know what to expect from data that we encounter. We can create a new type that represents our data. We'll create an interface to use in our application. Now, an interface is a contract between us and the data. The interface tells us that we can expect the data to follow the structure defined by the interface. We can also consider it to shape our data. From the command line, run ng generate interface housing location. Use a capital L for location. We use the Angular CLI here again with the generate command, and we instruct it to create an interface called housing location. In housinglocation.ts, update the interface to have the following properties that describe our data. ID of type number, name of type string, city of type string, state of type string, photo of type string, available units of type number, Wi-Fi of type Boolean, laundry of type Boolean. Save this file and we'll move on to the next place in the code where we'll make updates. Now we have the pieces to put everything together. We'll use input properties to pass data into our component and use the interface to let the component know what type of data to expect. You can mark a component property with the input decorator and this tells Angular that the property can be set in a template. In housing-location.component.ts, we need to update the imports to include input from Angular 4 slash core. We also need to import housing location wrapped in curly braces, again, from dot dot forward slash housing location. Next, in the body of housing location component class, we'll add a new property called housing location, lowercase h, capital L, of type housing location, capital H, capital L. We're gonna add one more change here. We wanna prefix the housing location property with the input decorator to make it an input property. 
Remember, the decorator requires the at symbol before the decorator name and parentheses afterwards. When you save this code, the editor may display an error for the housing location property. Well, that's because as an input, we're expecting the value to be passed in, so we haven't initialized it. In this case, we know that the value will be passed in. So we'll update the property to have an exclamation point after the property name. The exclamation point is called the non-null assertion operator, and it tells TypeScript compiler that the value of this property won't be null or undefined. All right, now our component has an input property named housing location that we can work with. In the component decorator metadata, let's update the template property to access the properties that we need to display. The image tag needs a source attribute to display an image. Let's add one now. Source equal quote housing location dot photo quote. Make sure that the housing location property is camel case. Now, there's one slight change to make here. As is, the template treats the value of the source attribute as a string with the value housing location dot photo. To resolve that, we need to use another feature of Angular called property binding. Property binding allows us to tell Angular that the value in quotes should be an actual property from the component class. To enable property binding, we'll wrap the source attribute in square brackets. Because this is an image, we should be mindful to add an alt text for screen readers and other assistive technologies. Alt equals quote exterior photo of double open curly brace housing location dot name double close curly brace. Okay, let me explain what we just did. The double curly braces are used for Angular's interpolation syntax. We can use that to mix in values and expressions into strings in our templates. When this gets rendered to the screen, the value will be a string that reads exterior photo of ABC or whatever the name of the housing location is. We can use this all over templates. It's a great tool to have in our toolbox. So let's do more interpolation. Let's update the content of the H2 to be double open curly braces, housing location dot name, double close curly braces, also update the content of the p tag to be double open curly braces housing location dot city double close curly braces comma space double open curly braces housing location dot state double close curly braces we can be creative with interpolation to create the display that we want with our templates the housing location component now accepts an input that we can use to customize the component. The next step is to work with the list of locations. Considering that, let's add our list. In home.component.ts, let's import housing location from dot dot forward slash housing location. Then we're going to add a new property to the home component class called housing location list of type housing location array and we're gonna assign it to be an empty array. Now we're gonna copy and paste the array entries from GitHub for this project. Head to goo.gle forward slash homes dash app dash listings. This URL will take you to code on GitHub that contains all the entries required. In home.component.ts, replace the empty array value for the housing location list property with the data from the entries you just copied. The results section is where we want to iterate over the entries of the housing location list and display a housing location component for each entry. In JavaScript, whenever we want to iterate over an array, we use something like a for loop. That's the same idea we want here. We want something like a for loop. In Angular, there's a syntax we can use to accomplish this goal. It's called the ng4 directive. Angular directives allow us to add additional functionality to elements and components. Now, we're going to add the ng4 directive to the housing location component. Update the app-housing-location tag to include the following. Asterisk ng4 equals quotes let housing location of housing location list quote. The code within the quotes is called angular template syntax. It creates a template variable called housing location, which represents an entry from the housing location list. 
The next step is to pass the housing location data to the housing dash location components using the inputs from the components. Update the app dash housing dash location component to include opening square bracket housing location closing square bracket equals quote housing location quote. Remember, this should be a separate attribute on the app dash housing dash location component tag and not a part of the ng4. Save your progress and check the browser. We have data being displayed. This is fantastic progress so far, but I'm sure you've noticed that the UI could use some updating to match the UI that we started with. The housing location images are too big and the items are not listed in a grid. Because we're focusing on Angular and not CSS, I'm gonna provide you with all of the style updates you need to make to the code at this URL, goo.gle forward slash homes dash app dash styles. Each update will be listed with instructions and you can copy and paste the changes from there into your application. All right, with the styles applied, save all files. Check the browser and you should find that our application matches the original design. Great job, friends. Really fantastic work. In this module, we've done a lot. So let's recap. We built the structure for our housing component. We made the component customizable with the use of inputs so that we could display each component with the correct data. We updated the template to use the ng4 directive in order to iterate over the housing location array to display each location. And finally, we added some styling to the application to make it render like the screenshots. Okay, that is some really, really great work. You should be very proud of yourself. And in the next section, we'll update the app to support routing. Very exciting. And I'll catch you in the next chapter.